Hi, my name is Barry Crampton. Today I'm going to show you around this uh, Hyundai Ionic 5. It's not ours, it belongs to uh, Just Motor Group, the Just Hyundai dealer at uh, Preston there. I'll tell you a little bit more about it, then I'll take you for a ride in it. It's a 2021 21 plate Hyundai Ionic 5, 73 kilowatt premium automatic has a top speed of 115 miles per hour and an engine power according to this uh, spec sheet of 214 brake horsepower a 12.3 inch touchscreen satellite navigation and media center driver's supervision instrument cluster with full tft display that's 12.3 inches as well lane keep assist parking distance warning forward and reverse dual led headlamps with low high projection rear led combination lights and uh, Apple CarPlay and also the Android system too. With a 350 kilowatt charger, the Ionic 5 can charge from 10% to 80% in just 18 minutes. And with a short five minute charge, that can add up to 100 kilometers of driving range. In all honesty, I'm not that clever. Uh, and I know you'll be thinking, Paz, you're a car salesman and you're not that clever, how come? Um, but I printed the spec sheets off on these vehicles and there's just far too much to remember. I'm going to try and um, cut it all into the video, but there'll be things I'll miss out. Sadly, I'll miss out, probably important things I'll miss out, but I'll, I'll try and show you how it drives um, in an impartial, <laughs> since I don't like electric cars, in an impartial way. You see the door handles there? So everything flips in, you come back to the car. Let's just see. So it's got keyless entry, keyless go. This is an extra, apparently. It's an optional extra that they flip out. Otherwise, you just have to put your thumb in and bring it out. Just in there, in, in case you can't get in or the battery's flat or something, there's an actual, just in there, there's a, a little key for a blade. So that's a good thing. In the mirrors, we've got the side impact protection warning. You've got these plastic, well, is it plastic? Yeah, plastic wheel arch protectors there. And they're bladed style, diamond cut and gloss black alloy wheels, Michelin premises tires. Got these rectangular headlamps. The front parking sensors, a very distinctive front on it. Um, under the bonnet, you've got a little bit of storage area there. But what I do particularly, I mean, I, I like good design, and obviously as, as cars are coming on crumpled zones and, and all the safety issues of, of today, I, I do like to see, in the old days, you just had a bonnet with kind of a frame welded underneath or, or glued underneath and, and pressed in round the side. But this, instead of just a frame, it, it's a complete double skin with slots of varying thicknesses and, and lengths which I'm assuming is designed to slow any impact from the front down. It gets, the slots get larger and larger towards the back and they're just like little, uh, about six mil at, at the front there and, and longer. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can't knock it. It's obviously an excellent design. It's a flat floor pan, so uh, there's no gear tunnel in the front, no, no kind of center console and no, prop shaft tunnel in the back for the person who is unlucky enough to sit in the middle to, to have to straddle. So uh, it's, it, it is real, real good design. There's a design theme throughout the car and it's these little squares. You see them in the mirrors here. Uh, I'm assuming it's something to do with the charging because when you open the charging flap, these little squares that show you how full the battery is. Although it's gray, it's a metallic gray, so it's, it's very, very shiny. Um, D-chrome around the windows. There isn't any privacy glass on this, rear privacy glass. There is a new model, which I'll, I'll try and remember the features. They did tell me at the garage, but as I say, in one ear and, and out the other, sadly. Um, the stripes down the side. It's, I saw a, a review of this car by Robert, Robert Llewellyn, uh, who plays Crichton on Red Dwarf. And uh, like, like he said, in, <laughs> One episode, it's got all in and outy things. There's, uh, and it, the, the car also looks a bit like it was designed.
designed by the same bloke who did Crichton's face. It, this, this kind of angular lines down here and, and, and so on. And straight, it's, I suppose it's, it's meant to look futuristic. And it is futuristic. There's even kind of the, the, the lines along there. I, I'm, I would be interested to see what it's like on a, when there's salt on the road and what sort of patterns the wind flow around these wheel arches create because as I say there's, there's kind of slats in, in the wheel arch protector. It'll make for an interesting uh, spray pattern. So you've got this very interesting uh, rear integrated spoiler. You can perhaps see up there, it's again, it, there's uh, vents in it. So that, I don't think it's got, no, it hasn't got a rear wash wipe. So those will be designed to, to keep the airflow off the back window and keep it clean without the, the need of a wiper. Press and hold the back there, it's power open, power closed tailgate. That's the reversing camera. There's quite a lot of luggage space, although that is fairly flat. Underneath here, you have the charging cable, the granny charger, your tyre kit, and then there's... Um... Right, I'm just going to put those keys in my pocket, make sure I don't lock myself out up on this uh, usually deserted moor. So this is the... This is quite a good thing. If you come up here, you're off grid or whatever, this socket plugs into the charging socket, but you can then run an appliance off it. So if I press the end in there like so, and then pull it apart, it's a bit of a tough job pulling that apart. Having said that, I've bust my hand, so I'm only using one hand. So there's the three pin socket in there. You can plug that in the charging socket and any appliance you've got, if you want to charge something else or work something, if you're out here, I don't know what it is you'd work, but uh, perhaps, I don't know, I was going to say a generator, but you wouldn't need a generator if you just plug whatever it is into here. Three pin socket in there and it, and it will run any electrical appliance. So that's, that's that. That's a, a real good, um, a real good idea. The back seats will slide forward. That gives you even more room. The back seats will go down, then it makes it massive. And then your power closed tailgate. We've got this square theme again on the back there. And again, the slats which match the front. And then you've got the graphics up the side, the rear parking sensors here, and of course, no exhaust. The charging flap. So charging flap, hold. There you go, that's the charging flap. With the charging flap, the little close button. So you're opening it with that. You don't press it down. You just click the close button like so, and that's it, all done. So here we are in the back. One of the things I've noticed in the back here, it's, uh, there you go. Headrest just stick in your back if you're a bit taller, but there's bags of headroom. And I've also noticed these, these door panels, they're quite wide, quite deep. If they weren't as, there'll be a reason for it, of course, but if they weren't as deep, this back bench seat could be another six inches wider, really, three inches on either side, which would then make it absolutely enormous. I do know from other videos I've watched that it's got a longer wheelbase than, than a Range Rover. And I noticed on the way up, it, it does really iron out the bumps. Um, of course, I suppose electric cars will have an advantage over um, internal combustion engines because with ice cars all the weight is kind of up the front there or in an old 911 at the back causing up the, the old problems but you'll be able to spread the weight more evenly and get it more balanced um, so there, there, therefore you should be able to iron out the bumps easier I, I would think so th this car on the way up drove brilliant and also um, very, very smooth, pretty quiet. I wouldn't say it's too much quieter than, a, than perhaps a Range Rover, it, um, but I, I've got to say, I, I, I did enjoy it. 
This car has cloth seats, all, all the, the whole bench seat is cloth. The newer model has a bigger battery. It'll do 315 miles on a charge, supposedly. The newer model has half leather or part leather, and uh, that's, I, I'm assuming he's, the part leather will be where this charcoal gray cloth is. You've got two USB charging ports in the back of the front center armrest for the, for the rear passengers. There is a handle here that takes a seat forward. And also, yeah, you can, if you prefer sitting straight up or you want extra room, then uh, of course that's what you can do. Has little vents in the B pillar there, which are adjustable and you can switch on. So direct the airflow straight to you. Parcel net goes without saying it's, it's a new car and uh, or newish car and, and demonstrator so it'll have the, the mats in which I'm trying my best not to get dirty but this car park is kind of grey and sandy so uh, I'll have to do a detour on the way back to just motors and, and get it hoovered out I don't want them lending me a, a lovely car like this and then me taking it back dirty they'll think I'm an animal um, rear centre armrest two cup holders You've got the Isofix child seat anchor points uh, in the back seat here as well. Um, lo lovely car, very, very, I've got to say, very, very comfortable. I've got my seat where I would drive it normally, and I've got bags of leg room in here. Um, the, there is plenty of room. Okay, I'll just take you for riding it. Okay just lose the jacket. Here we go, so that's the keys. Foot on the brake, press the start button. Everything's on. That's ready to go. What's that saying? When you select start, the screen will turn off and the navigation update will start. Oh, navigation update so now we don't want it to do that so right so that's the that's the screen as i was saying before the the more electrical appliances and accessories you use the more the range decreases if you'll see there on it's 109 miles at the moment but as i turn the fan up you'll see it going down there so we'll knock that down a bit and here we go here's your gear selector you've got park in the end there and um, we've started the car so if i turn that we'll just knock that to drive although i can't see there the the sun's in my eyes the gear is already selected so it's thinking buys you're an idiot the handbrake has automatically come off i hang i am going to have to put some air conditioning on because it's it's it was cloudy before now it's gone very warm i'm not sure which mode i've got this in but i was experimenting with the regenerative braking you can almost get it to be in a one pedal driving experience so here we go we're off got 107 mile range that polarized lenses don't help viewing i'm afraid and i can't actually see how to get that to uh, i mean i can see how to get it to nav if i switch nav on then i can see how to get it to home ah i know what i should have done this this has got this has got Apple CarPlay, it's got Bluetooth hands-free, Bluetooth audio streaming. That's just, that's, uh, yeah, that's lumbar support there. Electric driver's seat, I can move it backwards and forwards. Height and reach adjustable, multifunction steering wheel. All sorts are going on on this side. I need to get on the motorway or a straight road to try and demonstrate those. But honestly, it's just so, complicated um, 
that's the dash there as you see along there I will stop I will plug Apple CarPlay in because that's a lot simpler but you see there climate I mean that's that's just stuff that in my opinion you shouldn't be able to access a car when it's moving because it's just I mean it's just information dump it just <laughs> I, I, I just like a switch car drives fantastic it, it, I, the reason I brought it up here and that the, the uh, just Hyundai at Preston were kind enough to lend me it for a good few hours um, because I come up here nearly every day and I test all our cars we drive round in well, we drive round in we sell Range Rovers Jaguars Land Rovers um, BMWs, Audis, Mercedes that, that's what we try and um, concentrate on they all drive very very nicely and I have to say this drives nice you can see there if I accelerate you'll see the the blue line going there I'm using more and as I decelerate or take my foot off the accelerator the regenerative braking is put in charge back into the battery so with this I've got it turned right the way up and you, you can alter it with these paddles these aren't gear selectors the the, the paddles for the regenerative braking as I knock that off you feel like it's a gear change but it's it's just not it just allows it to go it allows it to move freer and I suppose there's not as much well it, there's not as much regenerative braking it it's a heck of a lot smoother I've got to say but as I wind it up here there you go I might have gone too far there but as I'm going downhill I haven't got my foot on the accelerator and it's just charging that's slowing it down a lot as well because I'm almost stopped and I'm on the hill so I'll just change it and uh, we're going a, a bit faster I'll get past certain death corner and then I must remember to take photographs of that as I say it's just it's too it's too much for me to take in no doubt some nine-year-old will look at that and go straight to all the controls all the material in here feels really nice as I was saying before it's a, it's a wide car with a long wheelbase and uh, thanks to Johnny Smith's video he uh, informs everybody that it's got a longer wheelbase than a Range Rover which you just wouldn't believe but that makes it more stable on the road I would say and with the with the regenerative braking on it makes like a when you take your foot off the accelerator it makes like this tiny whine we, little things please little minds but I like it I don't know whether you'll be able to hear that um, of course I'm just going to stop here quickly I'm not touching my phone that oh, I'm going to have to touch my phone right stopped off handbrake on phone in I need to get going because it's not the best place to stop so that's off again it's trying to give me an update that's the worst with electric cars Apple CarPlay click on Apple CarPlay I can see there out of the corner of my eye my phone screen was changing and now I'm on Apple CarPlay that's the best system ever so easy so I can just put that on maps now I've got the lights on haven't I so if I, I turn the lights off that's 
brighten the screen considerably. I was struggling to see it before, but I, sh I should have known really. We're in a bit of a traffic jam here. don't really want to go any faster. This is fast enough for me, especially in somebody else's car. So Bluetooth hands-free, Bluetooth audio streaming. We've got to, uh, the sat-nav, normal sat-nav, but then, as I say, I prefer Apple CarPlay. And i uh, got my audio books on here. I can also ask it or tell it to do stuff it should be from the voice activation. I should be able to do it from there. I don't know which the voice activation one is. It's, I think it's that one. So if I keep my finger on there, there you go. Navigate to Preston. It probably won't do it because there'll be no signal here. One sec. Yeah, it's, it's thinking about it, but it, it's that simple. As long as you do it before you set off. Went wrong. And, be try again. and before you lose signal. It's, uh, it's brilliant. Coming over that little humpback bridge there, that's, uh, that's a teller for some suspensions, and it, it, was, it was fine. I'm gonna pull over, let all these people pass that are in a, in a traffic jam. Let them go past. There you go. You, you drive like maniacs when there's sheep on the road. That's no problem. So, your heater controls there, your normal heater controls. So, you, from, that, from that dash, um, I'll just actually, well, there's nothing behind us. Uh, so, if I go to that screen, sorry, that screen, and then I go to Hyundai. You see there you've got EV, map, navigation, climate, uh, heated seats, I'm assuming that is, yeah, heated seats on, off, internal air circulation, just front climate, I'll knock that off again. What I wanted to show you was um, radio, media, Hyundai Live, that's where you put the phone, that's where you do your phone. Where's the settings? EV, we'll try EV, I don't think that's it though. EV, all, all your distances, no, that's not what I wanted. Blue link, Apple CarPlay, oh, settings. Right, vehicle settings. This is where, there you go, drive mode, driver assistance. So the driver assistance here, we've got driver attention warning and also lane safety. You click on lane safety, You've got assist, warning only, or off. Now, blind spot safety, why you'd want to switch that off, I'll never know. But your blind spot safety is a little triangle in, in the mirror, and anybody in your blind spot, I didn't do it there because we stopped, but anybody in your blind spot, put a, a warning triangle. Warning safety. The, I, must, I must get onto the motorway with this, or at least a, a dual carriageway. So I'm probably going to turn around in a minute, otherwise I'll just keep going through country lanes and I'm, I'm sure um, that's not what people want to see in this vehicle. It... <laughs> I, I'm a bit of a control freak. <laughs> Full disclosure, control freak, me. Um, you can set it there's a button here, lane. It's they're actually very difficult to see, but it's a lane or the road markings with the steering wheel in the centre. You click that, you'll see on here. It's a very very wide vehicle.
you, you can you can certainly tell the large wheelbase because it does when you go over a bump it does feel like the corner of the car and, and not just a bit further obviously so it's a very very stable car acceleration there there's also here the mode button so if I click on the mode button like so you'll see there it shot forward it went into sport that's eco and it, it drains the life out of it and then normal on here I, I, I can't see any I can't see any kind of indication that gives you a sign for the regenerative braking apart from you can just feel the car um, surge forward when you when you knock it down a little bit yeah that's that must be on kind of minimum we're just rolling I'll take my foot off the accelerator and we're just rolling so I'll knock it one further up, knock it again and again. There we go. That's uh, that's quite aggressive. So we're, we're going along here doing 35 miles an hour, and then take my foot off the accelerator and we're slowing down quite quickly we were going downhill then not uphill but it slows to a virtual stop I'll, I'll just see if there's a, one more no that don't feel like there's one more and there you go as well it's showing you this car's done 3525 miles showing you how much is left in the battery so I think it says 40 kilowatt hours there And then in the centre, it's telling you, telling you it's 18 degrees outside. We're coming to a hill here, so let's get some uh, let's get some electricity back. So it's saying here we're doing 3.5 miles to a kilowatt hour, I think, if that's right. So here we go, regenerative braking on. Still coming down there fairly fast. I'm having to put my actual brake on. That's loosed it off a bit. I'm sure there will be a sign somewhere, but I can't see it. Feels like it will just coast forever. Ah, no wonder, Baz, how stupid. Mind you, you've got to have 20 20 vision to see them. So that should be maximum. Maximum regen. Let's just see, I'm going uphill again there. But if I if I let my foot off the accelerator, we're uh, we're slowing down quite rapidly. So I'm in 48, let my foot off the accelerator, and there we're slowing. Will we stop?
pretty much stopped. With a little bit of forethought in your driving, which is how I would drive a normal car anyway. I often get criticised for uh, putting the car in neutral and coasting, letting uh, wind resistance, resistance on the tyres I suppose, and just slow you down. Um, people think that uh, you're out of control But uh, the, when you come into traffic lights, it's, oh, you, you can't accelerate if you're in danger. But if you come into traffic lights and the traffic lights on red, everybody else is slowing down as well. <laughs> so just behind this tractor with the re regen braking on. It's, uh, I have to say, once you get used to that, it will be quite handy, you know, for different situations. Obviously, you don't want regen braking on the motorway, I don't suppose, when the traffic's just going. So you want it to be as free as possible. Here, uh, I'm not having to brake at all. Just take my foot off the accelerator when the tractor um, slows down. And then it's pumping power back into the battery. That's the only time would tell and using it for a while to get the best out of that. The display there showing you the power and then also here where you are. Big display for the time and so on. And then you can magnify it like like that. I'm going to try and do a, a voiceover because I mean it, it, it's, there's, it, it's got a Car of the Year award. Um, I think it's for 2022. And there's several other things. Oh, the the recharging plug, that that socket for that you have for charging other things outside the car. There's also a plug socket under the the back seat in the middle, so you can plug anything in, and perhaps recharge your laptop or work off your laptop in the in the back seat. Power folding door mirrors, which you saw when I locked and opened the car from outside. There's something in the car, like a screw or something that's rolling about in the glove box, which reminds me the glove box. Um, when I when I just get up here, nothing coming. If you open the glove box, it, it's a drawer. Now, that's a good idea. The normal glove box is you pull the flap down and then everything that's been stuffed in there <laughs> comes shooting out. So it can't with a drawer, it's got to stay there. The regen braking slowing me down again. I, I'm, I'm assuming that's auto hold as well because crikey it, it won't it just won't stop it just won't stop They will not stop. I 
all in a big traffic jam. I'm frightened to death of losing the place in the traffic jam. <laughs> Front central armrest there, there's a, a bit of storage space in there, two cup holders, you've got a power socket down there and the USB, and the USB is the, the, the plug to plug in for your Apple CarPlay. Then at the back here, there's two more USBs, uh, those are chargers, and I think that's an auxiliary in. It is a very wide car. Let's try the power folding mirrors. This is a nightmare. Apple Car play back on, that's uh, that's my favourite. So I've got 4G signal there. Now also we've picked up, I could feel it then, the it's picked up the markings in the road. So it's showing me I've got the lane departure warning. So unless I indicate and I go towards the centre line, it will pull me back. It's also got another feature which I discovered on the way up. So hopefully my batteries will uh, keep going long enough for me to get on the motorway and demonstrate it. And hopefully there's not too much traffic on the motorway. So we'll get around here. So I'll, I'll knock the regen braking down. There seems to be, gosh, there seems to be a diversion here which is making it uh, virtually impossible to turn left. Oh, look at this. I'm having a nightmare here. Ah, oh, dear. So. Navigate to PR5 for a -E. Getting directions to Preston PR5 for AE. Starting route to PR5 for AE. 
So it's as simple as that. Well, I, actually, I'm nearly out of coffee, so uh, let's try this. Take me to Starbucks. One option is Starbucks on Capital Way in Preston. Is that the one you're looking for? Yes. Getting directions to Starbucks. Route in progress, are you sure you want to end navigation? Uh, yes, I, I'm, I want to go to Starbucks instead. It should automatically go. Yes, it Starting has gone. Route to Starbucks. Head east on Hampson Lane. So uh, that'll take me, that's where I go every morning. It's probably remembered that. I'm sure there's a Starbucks in Lancaster, which I'm not too far away from. Um, and to be honest, I could be here for a while. I'm going to turn that down a bit. I've got a 103 mile battery life, so I've got plenty of uh, charge to get me to Preston, hopefully. But as you can see up there, nobody will let you out. Uh, there's a van at the front who can't get out, I think. Uh, and I'm stuck in this traffic, which uh, is a bit annoying. These cameras are, are uh, they're getting pretty hot already. And we're just not moving here. It's uh, very bad. If I could do a three-point turn here, I, I might do a three-point turn and go back the other way. We need some bolder drivers at the front, and unfortunately, when I'm in somebody else's car, I'm not a bold driver. <laughs> I'm a very careful one. Just trying to cool the cameras down at the moment and with the, the aircon. I'm going to cancel that. Cancel navigation. Okay, it stops now.
that's the blind spot warning. Yeah, the bad news is, as you can see there, the, the traffic, the, uh, they've shut the motorway, um, which is very, very annoying. I'm just looking where the next services are. The blind spot warning lights coming up in the monitor as well. You see there, that's uh, this button here. If I click that, if I click it again, sorry, if I click it again, green lights coming up. It, it will actually steer. It's steering me. So it's just keeping me going. This, the, you see the traffic on the other side. Um, I'm in a, a predicament now. I've borrowed this car. I've got to get back that way. And this traffic has just stopped. At some stage, I'm going to have to turn around. But uh, I'm going to have to charge the vehicle. Uh, rather than risk going on that. Going on that motorway. Stupidly turn the wrong way and come a different, completely different way. come off at the next roundabout and uh, try and mo make my way back it's, it's, there's just no chance on the motorway no chance at all okay I'm, I'm gonna finish the, the video here <laughs> with range anxiety I should be okay and there will be plenty of places to charge between now and uh, now and home. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to stop and, and plot my route all the way back. Love the car, actually. It, it's it's very good. I like it. Um, can't complain. Look at that idiot outside lane with the trailer. Um. Let's see how we get back. I'll let you know. Okay, let me uh, let me just fill you in from uh, the last time the camera was on. I uh, the motorway was closed. Um, I was heading in the wrong direction with all the traffic queued up on the right hand side and actually stopped. I had a massive case of range anxiety because I'm not used to driving electric cars and realised that I would have to <laughs> loop round the back and come back to where I was filming and then back through the back roads of Preston to get, I mean, I just Hyundai, just Citroen in Preston lent me this car. I said I would be four or five hours. Um, I've been over that. I have rung them and, and they, were, they were fine with it. Uh, if it had been me that lent somebody else a, a 40 odd grand car, I'd, I'd have been chewing my fingernails now, but they were great. So what I had to do was come all the way back round, round the top and to Quernmore. The traffic was, everybody else was doing the same as you would expect. The motorway was at a standstill. The people on the motorway were stuck, couldn't move anywhere. 
the other people who'd, who'd already taken the diversion were all queued up, nose to tail, nose to tail, through the country lanes. It, it, it was horrific. Um, and, and all the time I'm thinking, geez, I, you know, I've, I've only got 90 mile. It's only 30 mile home. I've only got 90 mile. <laughs> um, but in a, in a petrol car, that 90 miles ticks away in, when you're stopped in a traffic jam. And you're going to say, oh, it's kind of stop start cars. They don't do that, Baz, and you hate stop start. Well, no, stop start, do, do switch it off until your air conditioning or, or whatever brings it back on. Uh, however, this, the electric cars, don't use anything when, it, when it's switched off, um, it, it, or very little, very little. So, I've managed to get back, so long as nothing else bad happens, I've got uh, 69 miles still. A couple of things I've found while I've been, uh, while I've been driving and the cameras have been off, that um, I stopped for something to eat because I've not had anything to eat since uh, since last night. And uh, reversing out, I, I couldn't, somebody parked right next to me and I couldn't see. So I'm reversing out and these blind spot warning lights, it's also, the steering wheel was was buzzing. I, what's that? Looked on the screen and it's warning me it's not safe to reverse out, um, which, which which is a great thing. Honestly, I, I could study this from now till I, I was 90 and still never pick up all the things that, that you can do with it. It's just, um, well, it's just beyond me. But the more you get it, the more you, you study, the more you drive it, uh, it's, it's shown me there the speed limits of this road. Uh, I'm, I found the speed limit system in the middle, which is from this button, and uh, you can change it from here. So that's the switch there. So that's giving me, me trip information. That's a compass, which I always think is useless. That's the tire pressures. And back to the speed limit system. This now, this is the bit I was telling you about. That's clicked the steering wheels. Picture of the steering wheels come on. I can, I can set cruise control. set the cruise control and it will steer me as well it'll keep me at a certain speed and steer me let's see is that, that it there you go so that is steering me I don't like that. It's, it's, it's lost the uh, it's lost the lines there but it's again it's steering me and it will do so until it loses it loses the lines it's not actually actually showing me it's got a white uh, picked up a line on both sides so it's, I think it's just working off this. And th this is just mostly guesswork on my part. Is that it? That steering wheel's green, gone off, so it's green again. Because I did notice before when I was going up the motorway, it had two indicators that appeared to show the lane you were in. So I, I've, I'm not actually, I'm ready to grab it, but it's steering, uh, it's gone off. It's, it's, not green anymore so not the best because there's no line on the side but as far as range anxiety goes I'm a bit cured especially in this one with 300 and well the, the, the one with the new battery 315 miles so that, that makes me happier the way it drives it's very very good um, I'm, I'm really, I'm pleasantly surprised. I, I like to hear, <laughs> you see, I've gone through the years listening for noises. It's partly been my job, listening for noises, listening for stuff that's out of place. And I, even, I do it when I'm on a plane, you know, I, I'm listening to the note of the engine all the time. And I think, you know, just in case I have to run into the cockpit and help the pilot out. But this kind of makes the same sort of noise 
all you can hear really is tyre noise. I dare say if anything else went like, like a, a ball joint or, or whatever, or a wheel bearing, then you know I'm going to pick that up. But um, I do like it. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. But the, the, the general manager at uh, Just Preston, and Just Citroen and Just Ion, his wife's got an electric car and he drives an electric company car. And when we were talking the other week uh, and I said I didn't like electric cars, he, he's been in the motor trade 30 years, I've been in it 50. And I think the important bit is that 20 years because when I was when I was going to the, the garage this morning, I stopped at Starbucks and there was two young ladies, uh, probably 18, 19, having a chat. And one of them said to the other one, so much has happened in our lifetimes, 18, 19 years. And, you know, that they'll be referring to Brexit and all that lot and uh, Boris Johnson and the, the Queen very, very sadly dying the other day. So much has happened in our, in our lifetime. And I'm, I'm 64, I'm three times, three and a bit times older than they are. And although lots happened in my lifetime, probably in the last 10 years, the most things have happened. So I understand what she's saying, but the most things, more things have happened in the development of cars. They've got really, really good. They've got really complicated. They've got all this stuff that we, in the 60s was in a James Bond car you know and, it, and you could only dream about all this and your and mobile phone in, phone in your pocket we had a thing with a big, big uh, and tick 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 round and you could only dream about these things these micro minute telephones and, and I, you know I've got a video camera in my glasses all spy stuff all this is happening really that the last 10, 15 years, I suppose, in the internet. But cars, the majority of my life was spent with Cortinas and so on and carburettors, fuel injection. I think the first fuel injection car we got was a, an Opel Monza and a Senator, a Jetronic. Um, you know, before that was plugs and points. Plugs and points, leads, condensers to stop the radio crackling. Uh, every time the, you know, the the, the spark plug fired. You, every time there was a spark. And you, you and then, it, you know, the motor trade goes along like so. Then all of a sudden, as the girl said, so much has happened in in their lifetimes, and we've got electric cars like that. And this is what, this is probably what I can't grasp I can't get hold of um, because I'm I'm like a motor trade dinosaur you know it, it, if this was parked it's a lovely car if this was parked to a, an Alfa Romeo Spider a Duetta a 68 I'd walk past it and jump in the Alfa Romeo and then I'd go <laughs> like like when I was on holiday I, I'd I'd go about 50 miles and it break down. Um, it's. I think the motor trade has perhaps passed me by, which is why I. Uh, I and I'm I'm setting my ways in everything, not not just about cars, everything, clothes. I still wear the same sort of clothes, that, uh, the same style of clothes that I wore in the 80s as as well. Uh, I'm just setting my ways, but I, honestly, I can tell you that you wouldn't be upset if you bought one of these um, it's it drives superb 66 mile left I think I set off with a I think it was 130 by the time I got off the car park and I've done more I've managed to eke out more miles um, with the regen braking than was on the on the vehicle in total with the mileage I've done with the total that's left and what I've actually covered um, because I'll have done easily 90 miles easily 90 miles so somewhere 
this vehicle has made its own fuel, it's made its own electric, and that's from the regen braking. So, again, all, all my, my electric cameras here, I don't know which ones are still going, um, that, that one and that one by the look of it, but um, again, big thanks to uh, Just, the garage on Fire Road in Preston, for letting me loose in this uh, in this Ionic. Um, they have promised me, or <laughs> they, they've promised me that they will lend me more. Uh, which which I love Citroens. We we sell a lot ourselves. We're not in competition with them. We sell older Citroens than they do. So uh, they're not, you know, they're not kind of. Um, Whoops, I've done it again, I've gone the wrong way. They're not helping the enemy, so as to speak. You know, I've only lived in Preston for like the majority of my life. <laughs> and I went out with a girl up the road there <laughs> and I still can't find my way. <laughs> Fortunately, with the Apple CarPlay and its, its own um, navigation system, even I can't get lost. It, it's just a, a bit lost for words, really. Plus, I'm trying to get back be, before they shut at four o'clock. Um, it's uh, it's a great car. So that across there, 38 miles an hour. If I click up there, 39, that's no, 41. You can also set the distance you want to remain from the car in front. So it's kind of distronic or um, adaptive cruise control. I think that's it. That Yeah, that's it, your, your button there, which I don't, I don't know whether that's working. So, with uh, with that, I'll uh, I'll finish the test drive. It's been a long day. <laughs> it's fortunately I like driving, so it's not so bad. It's my day off today as well, so it's it's a bit of a busman's holiday, but uh, I'm I'm quite happy. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> it, it'll probably be one of our cars, uh, a used vehicle next. And also, I'll keep you up to date with the purchase of my Citroen Ami, which I'm looking forward to. And uh, thanks again. Bye-bye.